Hello everyone, thank you for checking out my YouTube channel today, The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. I'm your host, as always, Nick Barksdale, and today we are joined by a very special guest, Dr. Mayer. Dr. Mayer, thank you so much for coming on today. My pleasure. Great to be here. Now we are getting to the intense subject, and that is religion. So I had a few people really asking the same questions, and I really want to get into this because I, I'm fascinated by the history of religion myself. And so not that we may know a lot, we may not know much at all, but Just Specter asked, the first question that naturally comes to mind is regarding religion and rituals of these people. What evidence is there about the religion of these people? And more importantly, is there a change in religious architecture and artifacts after the coming of the Philistines? Okay. Um, great question. The, the, uh, fast, the Philistine religion is a fascinating topic. Um, over the last um, couple of decades, we have more and more information. Um, up until 20 years ago, the only Philistine temple was a temple that was found at Tel, Tel Kassila, which was on the very, very outskirts of the region settled by the Philistines. In more recent years, we have um, we have a couple of temples at Tel Asafi. We have a temple at um, uh, several temples at the uh, Ekron, um, uh, both the early Iron Age and the late Iron Age. And there's a lot of other um, material remains from from Philistine culture. And interestingly, mo uh, one of the big problems with the study of the Philistines is most of the data we have come from the large cities. We don't have a lot of data from the small um, uh, rural sites, etc. And recently, we've had some interesting uh, cultic remains coming from the non-urban sites, and I'll talk about them in a moment. Now, when we look at the early Philistine uh, cult, there are some things that remind us very much of the Aegean. Uh, for example, some of the plans of the, of the buildings which are deemed as cultic seem to have some connection to the Megaron from, from Greece. Um, uh, some of the figurines seem to be Aegean-inspired or very close to Aegean-like figurines, but not exactly. Similar, but not, not identical. Um, and um, there are various cultic paraphernalia which shows various influences from various uh, Eastern Mediterranean cultures. Um, when we start getting later in the Iron Age, um, for example, the very big uh, uh, temple that was found from the end of the Iron Age at, um, at the Ekron, there the architecture is either slightly Cypriot or Assyrian, or some people say there's some Egyptian aspects in it. Um, it's not as clearly a GM as they tried to say in the past. Um, and interestingly, also, the cultic objects are mi much mixed batch, but nevertheless, in that temple, they found that inscription which mentions the goddess uh, Potnia or Patgaya, uh, which is, has a connection to the, uh, to the Aegean. Uh, now, um, when we look at other uh, Philistine um, cultic uh, locations, so for example, at Tel Asafi, we have a, a Philistine temple in the lower city, which has... Um, for the most part, I would say it's more, um, as far as its architecture, it's, it's very local in character. Um, but some of the cultic aspects show some connections to uh, the Aegean. So, for example, we have a, a group of votive vessels, small uh, vessels, you know, meant to be given to the temple. And among them, there's a conch, a tonagalea conch, which is a type of, of a conch, which is, we know from, uh, from the Aegean that has it has cultic uses and not not in the Levant. So there's this very interesting uh, mixture of things um, uh, Recently uh, at the rural Philistine site of Nahal Patish, they found, found a small uh, uh, Temple and in the temple they found some objects which seem to have Aegean influences and the same thing goes uh, at the site of Yavne, which is in the city, modern city of Yavne, um, which is uh, in, let's say, north, uh, north northwest of, uh, of Ghat, somewhere in the area of Ashdod, um, they found a, a, a cultic repository pit with thousands of cultic objects, probably belonging to a temple, which they did find. 
Um, and this temp this repository pit had all kinds of cultic objects. And again, some of the objects there have some indications of Aegean influence on them, but but a lot of local things. So it's this there again, it's it's this complex um, mixture. Now, who are the Philistine deities? The uh, biblical tradition, tradition is the main Philistine deity is a god by the name of Dagon. Dagon. And um, this was seen as a male god. Um, but when we look at the Philistine archaeological remains, um, most of the indications show that the main Philistine deity was a goddess. That goes for most of the, most of the, of the, uh, of the figurines. The inscription that we have from uh, from uh, from um, Ekron, the uh, the depictions of uh, of women, of uh, birds, etc. So it, it could be, and one of and one of the possibilities is is the god Dagon in the Bible is actually a goddess who the later biblical writers um, you know did a sex change operation on that on that goddess and turned it into a uh, a tell to a, into a god. Um, so, um, uh, so there, there's a, a very. But in addition to that, there seems to be other secondary gods and goddesses in the uh, in the play as well, and that's very common uh, in the ancient Near East of having you know uh, various gods playing a role. So that's interesting. interesting. 